My name is Eric Gustafson and I'm the ESL Specialist at the Student Academic Learning Services for Durham College. This is the Academic Success for ESL Students Acculturation Workshop. To begin with, we'll talk about the word acculturation. I'm wondering if you know what it means. If you look at the word in the middle here, you can see the word culture. So that's a big hint. Acculturation means to acquire the knowledge and skills to be able to adjust to the expectations and social patterns of a new cultural setting. So for example, if you've recently entered Canada, you're busy learning the skills and the knowledge so that you can adjust to the new environment and the new social patterns in Canada. The same is true when you enter college. There's a new set of social patterns and expectations for you to adjust to. And that's what acculturation means. And that's the main point of this workshop is acculturating to college and becoming successful at Durham College. In this workshop we'll discuss the barriers to your academic success. So barriers meaning challenges. We'll talk about cultural values of Canada post-secondary educational values in Canada, post-secondary meaning college and university level. We'll talk about culture shock, ways to recognize it and ways to reduce it. And we'll talk about your professor's expectations of you in class and in your programs. We'll talk about class participation and how you can join into your class more and volunteer more information. We'll also talk about group work, which is an, an important part of your classwork. And we'll talk about your responsibility with the information in this workshop. So let's begin. The first thing I'd like to ask you is what are the biggest challenges to your academic success at Durham College? You may have already had some classes, or you've at least had some time to think about it, and you might be wondering. The three biggest answers are cultural barriers, educational barriers, and language barriers. The cultural barriers refers to your understanding of the Canadian college education system. You need to learn where your supports are, how to access services, and so on. Educational barriers refers to understanding what your professors are expecting of you. And then language barriers are obviously your English skills and how they affect your success for speaking and writing. It'll be important for you to improve your English skills so that you can better understand and respond to the cultural and educational expectations. Cultural values. We'll begin by talking about your own cultural values and compare them with Canadian cultural values. Now, because you're not here, I'm going to ask you some questions and have you think about your own cultural values and then talk to you about some of the Canadian ones. So first off, what are some of the cultural values from your country? What behaviors are important in your culture? And what do people in your culture value and expect from others? For the first question, if I were to tell you a Canadian cultural value, maybe I would say freedom. So what are some of the cultural values from your country? In Canada, freedom. That would be one. Number two, what behaviors are important in your culture? In Canada, when you meet a person for the first time, usually you'll give a handshake. And the last question, what do people in your culture value and expect from others? In Canada, people expect honesty from others and they value it. Canadian cultural values will start with individualism. In Canada, individual contribution is respected. We want to know people's opinions and how they feel even if it's different from others. We also respect 
equality. Equality meaning respect towards others, regardless of their age, their gender, their race, or their religion. So in Canada, for example, if a man and a woman both had the same job, you can expect that both of them will have the same salary. That's equality. Informality. A casual attitude is not a lack of respect. So you may have had your professor ask you to call them by their first name, Mary or John, and that may feel strange to you, but calling them by their first name is not showing a lack of respect. Punctuality. Showing respect for other people's time is also very important. Don't be late for your classes. Don't be late for your appointments. It's important. Now we'll talk about post-secondary educational values. Comparing international education values with Canadian ones. So to talk about international educational values, I'll ask you some questions. Since you're not here and I can't ask you face to face, I'll just have you think about your answers. What is the student's role in your culture? What is the teacher's role? Traditionally, students listen and teachers speak. Is that the case of your educational values or is it different? How are student questions handled? Can students ask questions at any time or must they wait until a particular time or never ask questions? How are teaching and learning connected? How is evaluation conducted? Traditionally, from the instructor to the student, so the instructor or the teacher is evaluating the student's performance. Do you ever have a chance to evaluate your teacher in your home culture? What are the student's expectations of the class? What are the instructor's expectations of the students? Now let's talk about Canadian educational values. What do you know about Canadian ideas and values of education? If you've been in Canada for a few weeks or a month, you may have already had some classes at Durham College. So you may have already experienced some of the differences. If you have, what will be challenging for you in the Canadian college system? One simple example that I gave before was if your professor has asked you to call them by their first name. That may be a big challenge for you. And there will be many more, I'm sure. Before we talk about the professor's expectations of you in class, I'd like to talk, take a little bit of time and talk to you about culture shock. The first thing to talk about is to understand that as you adjust to your new life in Canada, you may have to behave in ways that challenge your cultural values. This change in your normal way of thinking or behaving may challenge your core values. In order to adjust to Canada, you may be required to think in a different way or act in a different way, and that will challenge your, your belief system, your values and that can sometimes result in culture shock. What is culture shock? Why does it happen? We all believe our own cultural values and behaviors to be the right way. This is called ethnocentrism. When you feel that your own values, your own cultural beliefs are the right way, and you go to another country, and they have a completely different set of values and beliefs and behaviors, that, that's a challenge because you feel like your way is the right way. How to recognize culture shock? I'm going to ask you a few questions and if your answer is yes to any of them, then you may be experiencing culture shock. Are you eating more or less than usual? Have you become less social than you used to be in your home culture? Do you become angry or frustrated more than before or more easily than before? Do you often complain about the host country or culture? 
Do you sleep more than before? The stages of culture shock are as follows. The first stage of four is called the honeymoon stage. If you've only been in Canada for a few weeks or perhaps a month, then likely you are experiencing the honeymoon stage where everything is interesting or charming and all of the differences are curiosities. Soon after the honeymoon stage comes the negotiation stage where now you're noticing that many of the cultural differences are quite a challenge and your identity, your cultural identity is being challenged. Then comes the acceptance stage where a new cultural identity starts to emerge based on your home culture and the culture you've entered. So bits of both cultures are creating your new identity and you feel comfortable in both cultures. The final stage is reverse culture shock where there's an internal questions when re-entering your home culture because of your new identity. Your new identity includes parts of the new culture that you've adopted or adapted to and this may be challenging when you return home and other people said wow you're like a Canadian now or you're, you sound like a Canadian. The next step is coping with culture shock. How do you manage culture shock if you experience it? The first step is expect it, recognize it and understand it. If you don't expect it or understand it, you may feel down or sad or depressed and not understand why. Remember the problem is mostly from your own state of mind. The millions of people around you are fine and if you're the one that feels sad or depressed or alone, far from home, this is from inside of you, not from outside of you. So you need to understand that. This is a valuable life experience for you. Whether you're here for a one year program, two year, three year program, or you've moved to Canada and starting a new life, this is a life experience you'll never forget and you have a great opportunity to learn a lot of new things. Look for the best in your situation. What's good about your situation? There will be many things, good people, good experiences, and it's important to focus on them. Talk to people about your experiences. If you have people from your home culture around you, they're also experiencing the same things, it might help to talk to them. But also talk to Canadians and find out more about them. Share your experiences. I'm sure they're interested to hear them. Respond to things. Don't react to them. If somebody says something to you that seems negative, you may be experiencing a culture difference or a language difference. You may not have understood. So remember that it's important not to just immediately get angry and react in a negative way, but to think about it and or ask somebody or ask the person, what, what do you mean? It's important to respond to things, not immediately react to them. Be open-minded and flexible. This is a new experience. You expected a new experience when you came with new ideas and new behaviors and values. So take them in and, and examine them and see if you enjoy them. Some things will be good, some things won't be. And learn as much as you can. Ask questions. Find out about Canada and Canadians. Okay, now I would like to talk to you about Canadian college professors and what they expect from you. They want you to be responsible for your own learning. It's really important for you to follow up. So, for example, if you're sick one day, it's important for you to ask your professor for the information you need. Don't expect your professor to come to ask you, are you okay, or did you get the information? 
they want you to learn responsibility just as you would have to be responsible if you're working. Be able to work well in groups and individually. We'll talk about group work shortly. Be able to communicate well in spoken and written English. It's important to always keep improving your English skills. You will be asked to give presentations, write reports or essays, and your English skills will be important. Have strong academic integrity. Academic integrity means academic honesty. If you're cheating or you're found to be cheating by copying something from the internet or copying from a friend, that's cheating and can be considered plagiarism and plagiarism would be a time when your professor can give you a zero on your assignment. If it happens more than once it's even more serious. You can be removed from your class or you can be removed from the entire program or the college. It's very serious in Canada plagiarism issues. In fact we have another presentation, another workshop for you called avoiding plagiarism that we will offer you. It's very important information that you need to pay attention to so you can avoid any problem. Be active and interactive in your class. So volunteer, learn how to ask questions and volunteer information and join the discussions and help your classmates. Ask questions when you don't understand. If you don't understand one idea and the next idea comes along where you need the first idea, you'll get lost very quickly. So please learn to ask questions when you don't understand. Whether you do it in class or to a classmate or after class to your teacher, you make sure that you find out the information you need. The next thing is to develop your critical thinking and problem solving skills. For example, in your classes you may study example A and example B, but on the test, on the exam, you may see example C that you've never seen before. Your teacher will expect you to use what you learned from solving example A and B to create some new solution for example C. This is critical thinking and problem solving. This is very important in the work environment in Canada and it's important in the classroom environment as well. So if this is something that you're not familiar with or you haven't done very much, many countries use memorization much more than Canada. Some memorization will be important but critical thinking and problem solving is something that you'd like to develop to help your success here. Be able to give presentations about what you've learned. It's important that you develop your speaking skills so that you can speak to your classmates and in future you can speak to your coworkers and colleagues about what you've learned. Understand that the professor is your partner in the learning process. The professor is the teacher, you're the learner. The job is to teach you information, your job is to learn the information and this is a partnership. The teacher does not expect to be the center of the class. They try to put the students in the center where the main job is the students to learn the information. Be respectful towards your professors and classmates and be successful in your course and program. These are all the things that your professors expect you to do. One way to achieve success is through class participation. What is class participation? Active involvement in the learning process. Why is it important? Participation creates a more active learning process by checking understanding and giving feedback about your progress to the professor. If you ask a question or volunteer some information, the professor knows whether you understand well or not. If you don't understand well, they can help you. And if you do, they can move on to the next point. It's very important. How to build your participation skill. Participation will be very important for your classes. One thing you can do is preview or read your textbook before you go to class. 
improve your English speaking skills and your English writing skills. If you open the document that accompanies this workshop video, there's a document with the same name, there's some extra information. The document looks like this. This is page 8 and at the top it says improving your English speaking skills and then improving your writing and so on. So please use the document to get more information about those skills. Another way that you can build your participation skill is to learn to balance your study and play. To do this, we'll look back at the same document, page 8 again, and you can see on this chart, which is a, just a sample model, uh, to show you roughly how many hours there are in a week, and how a typical student might spend their time. Travel time is to school and to home, between home and school. Class time, homework and study time, sleeping, meals, part-time job, hobbies, interests, and socializing in clubs. Each student will be different, but if you remember that these categories exist, maybe you can decide how you spend your time. If you're conscious about having some time for fun and relaxation, your study time and class time will be much more effective. So think about this for time management. Build your support network. This is your friends, your classmates, study groups, connections with teachers. It's important that you find out where to get help and then use that network to get help. How to improve your participation. Build a connection with your professors and classmates. It could be simply by starting with a good morning or a smile at the beginning of the class. Over time, they'll come to do the same and realize that you're, you're a friendly person and they'll remember you. Ask questions when you don't understand. I've mentioned this before several times and it's a very important skill to learn so that you can stay on top of the information and keep learning. Be active when listening. If you're listening to somebody, nod your head so that you show that you understand. Make eye contact. Ask questions. Do you mean blah blah blah? This way you show that you understand the information. Remember why you're here, here in Canada. You've come to study, you've come to have a new experience, a new life experience, and it's not easy, but it's worth it. And so it's important for you to remember that and keep working. Use that for motivation. Maintain a positive attitude. It's very difficult to succeed if you feel negative about things. So try to be positive about your experience and your situation and that will help your success. Speak loudly and confidently. Don't be shy about your English. Mistakes are okay. You can learn from mistakes and you can change. So take a chance and if you make a mistake, there's a great chance for you to learn something new. The next point I want to talk about is group work. In many of your courses, you will be required to work in groups with other students to complete courses, assignments, and succeed in your program. Why is group work used in college classes? It's part of the Canadian education system and your professors will require it. It's an opportunity to learn the skills for being part of a successful team. And it's a Canadian business practice required in the workplace. Group work is also used in college classes as an opportunity for sharing different skills and experiences from your group members. You can learn from them and they can learn from you. Your responsibilities with group work are as follows. Make sure to preview your textbook and participate in group discussions. Follow the group work guidelines given to you by your professor. 
contribute to discussions. So volunteer information, ask questions. Ask questions if you don't understand. So if something is happening in the discussion and you couldn't catch it because of English or it was going too quickly, stop them and ask ask questions about the, the part that you didn't understand. Attend all meetings and arrive on time. Remember, punctuality is important. Do your part of the work. Research and reference your work carefully. Then edit and proofread carefully. Also, ask for feedback from your group or visit the Sal Center with your final copy for feedback. Complete your part of the work on time. If you say you're going to finish by a certain time, make sure you do. And be prepared to present your part if a presentation is required. Practice with your group or visit Eric, the ESL specialist, for feedback. The last part of this video talks about the toolkit. You can find the toolkit in the handout which accompanies this video. So next to the video file that you opened, you can find the handout file with the same name with all the extra information. Now the last few pages of the handout contain some useful information for you, so please check into it. The information contained is about how to preview a textbook chapter. So if you open to page 10 of the handout, which looks like this, you can see all the steps that are important to follow before reading your textbook chapter. This will help you prepare for reading, prepare for the information, and give you some idea of what the textbook will be about, or what the chapter will be about, before you read. It's a good idea to do. The next part of the toolkit is how to proofread your written assignments. So if you turn to page 11 and 12, on page 11 you can see a checklist and it's a series of questions to guide you through your paper for proofreading. So the first question about the content is have you done everything the assignment requires? If yes you have, you check the box. If you haven't, you have to go back and change it. Just follow all these questions and if you can answer yes to all of them, then you know that you're on the right track. The second page, page 12, gives you some tips and strategies for proofreading. It's very helpful information, so please read it carefully. If you have any questions about proofreading or previewing your textbook chapter, please come and see me, the ESL specialist. The last part of the toolkit shows you how to communicate in an academic and professional manner by email. If you turn to page 13, it looks like this, and it gives you several tips and strategies and ideas on how to make your emails professional. Remember, when you communicate with your professor, you should do so in a business-like, professional way. And these are the tips on how to do that. For more information, come and see me at the SAL Center. You can also visit the SAL's website www.durhamcollege.ca backslash cells. The website gives you all kinds of access to all of the information and services that we have in the Sal Center. If you look on the left bar here, you can also access all the English language services that I offer, as well as writing skills and resources. There's a lot of information, tip sheets, help sheets, and web resources as well. So make sure that you look at those. Also, there's learning skills and resources. We have peer tutoring, science resources, math resources, and business. So lots of helpful information here. So please visit the website. It's a great place to start. Um, or come and visit the SAL Center in SSB 204. That's the Student Services Building. We're coming to the end of the workshop now, and I want to be clear that you are responsible for the information in this workshop. Make sure that you review and understand all of the information presented today. Ask questions if you don't understand. Be prepared to use the information in your school life. 
Your professors will expect you to know this information. Be accountable for this information. You cannot say that you did not understand. You must carefully study this information and follow my guidelines. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me. My email is on the screen now. Keep in touch with cells. And if you have any feedback, also you can email me. Thank you for your attention.